and it is uh, uh, my uh, big pleasure to present today's speaker, my old friend and colleague, Professor Xia Chen from University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And I must say that today in the morning, I had a lecture uh, for uh, student from Jilin University, and uh, uh, it was devoted to some properties of Brownian motion. And I said that they have a, a very, uh, not very often existing uh, possibility to visit our seminar and to hear one of the greatest specialists uh, in the uh, subject, uh, Professor Xia Chen. So please. Okay, so first of all, it's my pleasure to give a talk in your institute. And I admired your institute very much. Last time, 10 some years ago, I visited it. And that's a very good memory. So thanks for inviting me again. Um, so here is a model. So this time when I prepare my uh, talk, I was thinking what kind of talk I will give. So certainly I'm not the person, you know, at this time to cover the huge part of this area because I'm new to this uh, model. So the I did a lot of things in the parabolical Anderson models, but hyperbolical Anderson model is just the beginning. So I'm going to bring a, a very specific model and give a very specific um, you know, uh, theorem about this model. So that's uh, um, the, the, the contents of the talk. Um, so I was thinking what kind of information I should give you in this talk. You know, the proof is too much details. And uh, even I will get lost during the talk. So I think uh, the one information I try to send out is uh, how we develop ideas to solve this type of the problem. That's is my goal for this talk. Uh, so here is the model. And uh, it's not very general. For example, the, the noise, the Gaussian noise does not depend on the time. Um, not because it is, that's the time you know, independent case. It's because now the technology have not reached that point to talk about a time dependent noise. Okay, uh, so that's uh, about the uh, initial condition. I choose for the simplicity, I choose this as very specific initial condition. But since we are talk going to talk about, uh, you know, kind of large scale or some particles, you can imagine, you can, you know, generalize this kind of uh, uh, initial conditions a little bit, but that's not our goal. Just make life easy to consider very simple, simplest initial condition. Okay. Um, now, this is, a, so since I have only main results, so I'm going to give my condition in this page. So the condition is mainly about on that the the uh, covariance function of the Gaussian. So we assume that kind of uh, scaling property given here. Um, so this, um, or homogeneity. So by this homogeneity, later on, when we do the computation scale the time, it has become a very convenient to make the time change from arguments. So, the gamma is non-negative in our assumption. Of course, as the covariance functions that also have to be non-negative definite. So under those conditions, the relation between alpha and the dimension have to be alpha is no bigger than the dimension. 
And the equality holds only when the case of that's a white noise, that means the gamma is a direct function. So that's our, basically is our assumption. You know, the dimension goes from one, two, three, and with this, uh, essentially, this kind of uh, assumption, the only exception we are not going to include is a dimension three white noise. In that case, the equation does not have a global solution. So you cannot talk about those, uh, you know, that's large scale or some particles. So this is the only case we, you know, exclude. And so in our talk, by this uh, assumption that alpha is always less than C. Okay. Um, so here are some, uh, you know, important, uh, special case of the Gaussian noise included in our assumption. One is the Y noise. So basically you have a browning sheet, you take the degree. So that's called white noise. You can do the same thing, start with a fractional browning sheet, take all the derivatives, let's give you the case two. You can also consider the case where that's the covariance is a radian symmetric. So that's a, can respond to also a very important noise, which sometimes associated with some kind of physical models. Um, so those are assumptions. That's our main result. Uh, so this, first of all, this type of results um, is called intermittency. And I remember last time, um, when we talk about parabolic Anderson model, I mentioned why do we care about intermittency? What are the intermittencies? Um, so this time, that's the reason is still the same. So that's our result. Um, so two results. One is uh, long-term asymptoticals. T goes to infinity. T a uh, p fixed. Another is that uh, t is fixed and you need the power p goes to infinity. If you compare those two results, you can say that uh, they are quite much consistent in the sense, if you forget about uh, which limits you take for the p limit or p limits, they are pretty much the same if you move that's, uh, the, the, those uh, you know, term around. Um, so that's, I guess, the reason we have this is because of the homogeneity. Remember, mm -hmm. so we assume one of the important, uh, you know, assumption is for our gamma, the covariance function, have a homogeneity. Homogeneity allows you to scale the variables in many ways around. So that's why you're not surprised to see this kind of thing. Any questions? Okay, so I want to make some remark. Uh, three points. First of all, um, you know, that's this is the first for this type of model beyond the Darlan's condition. Darlan's condition says alpha must less than two. The reason for that, because the previous, all previous hyperbolic Anderson results was, you know, the existence and the uniqueness was established under the Darlan's condition. So if you don't have a existence or uniqueness, you cannot talk about property of the system. So in this regard, you know, even speak of the you know existence and uh, uh, uniqueness. This is an extension. You know that uh, this is something beyond the Darlan's condition. And Darlan's condition is posed by Robert Darlan 
for the parabolical Anderson model. It turns out is a basic condition for that model. But the, all results basically suggest if you move to the hyperbolic models, then the Dallas condition is not good enough. Okay. So that's the first point. Um, then, of course, second point is in my, in, to my best knowledge, this is the first precise or some, uh, you know, or some topical result for the hyperbolic Anderson model. You know, that you have, uh, if you attend my talk, uh, previous talk, you know that this kind of results happens to this parabolic Anderson equations. Because, in, you know, parabolic Anderson equations, you, you know, you have a, So that's a represents a solution in terms of Brownian motions. So you get that kind of result. But for the inter, for that hyperbolic Anderson model, you don't we don't have this kind of structure. So we have to develop a new you know method to solve our problem. So that is my talking point. The point is three. I will spend time to try to see that what we try to do and what we have done and what, what we try to do in the future. That is to develop the ideas that's the work with e to winner chaos expansion because that's the only thing we can depend on this model. Uh, excuse me, Sia, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, my question is the following. Uh, that uh, one of the power tool uh, when we work with weak product is the it uh, is the Fourier Wiener transform, which uh, moves cool. the uh, weak product into usual product. Uh, so uh, yeah. uh, we can suppose that at least we can have uh, the uh, Fourier Wiener transform of the solution uh, precisely. Mm -hmm. We can have it. Yeah. Right, right, the, right. You are right. So. First of all, I wanted to say that, uh, yes, this is the idea we already know, that if you have this uh, Ito winner chaos expansion, a, any L2 problems, you can at least have a handle to, uh, to work with. But to think about the, the way we, we post our main theorems, and we consider that a LP you know, norm for that sort of, uh, solutions, P can be very large, and uh, so that's it's not a very direct to link to that L two expansion. So that's my point to make. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. okay. So uh, you need uh, some maybe some relationship between different LP norms and so on. Yeah, for, right. for solution for solution. Mm -hmm. Right, especially for that precise solution with post mm -hmm. mm -hmm. theorems. So that's I think my. This time, main time I want to spend is to spend on that kind of idea development. Um, okay, so we well, now start. Me, please. May I ask one more question? Yes. Uh, on previous slide. In what terms this do one? you define the intermittency? No, no, no. Next slide. In this what one? terms? Intermittency. How do you define intermittency? Okay, so the in, uh, okay, so mathematical definition of intermittency is defined essentially through that as the asymptotic. Yes. yes. Something deeper than that, intermittency refer to that as the. Geo uh, geographical the feature of uh, that's a graph of your solutions. For example, intermittency is looks like that's a landscape of New York. You have a lot of, you know, have a high rise buildings in the downtown, but uh, most of that's the place, uh, those are the fried no grounds, the typical American cities. 
that's intermittency. How do you, uh, so mathematically we have to, you know, that's a link to, can be described by the moment or some topics. Um, that's uh, all I can tell right now. But if we, if you have an interest and we can discuss that later on after the uh, talk. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to spend a time, little time to remind that's something about this uh, Eta Winner chaos expansion. Um, here, I would like to thanks, take the chance to thank uh, Andrew because I remember that uh, 10 years ago, 10 some years ago in Hangzhou, he, at that time, I'm totally outside about this knowledge. And he spent a little bit time to explain those things to me. And at that time, I feel perhaps in my life, I will never do anything to do with these things. It turns out it becomes relevant. Um, so, first of all, we know by the singularity of the low, you know, the, the Gaussian noise. That's the mathematical definition of our model. Actually, is not so like this. Um, so, where that's the G is a fundamental solution um, of the wave equation. Um, so, in according to our setup, this stochastic integral is taking a score of the things. Um, so, about that uh, um, G function appears here. So, if you talk about the, the Fourier transform of G function, they have a uniform uh, representation, uniform to all dimensions. But the G function itself is not so uniform, it heavily depends on the dimensions. Here I list the three, you know, first three dimensions, the expression of the G functions. Um, you can say that um, in increase with the dimension, that's the increase with the singularity. When you reach the, the dimension three, this uh, G function is not uh, already not the ordinary function. That is, uh, um, you know, this uh, uh, sigma is the surface measure. Um, but one good news about the dimension one, two, three, that the G function is non-negative. So that's why we limited our um, attention to the first three dimensions because the non-negativity of G is important for our arguments right now. Another fact, you know, the Kalkiner's factor I'm going to mention is if you take that as a, uh, you know, law, we'll get this kind of um, form. Uh, I want to say, make uh, two points. First, um, in the really detailed proof that the Fourier transform play a very important role. Um, one of the such is if you say that this kind of, a, um, you know, that's a, the form here, that reminds you that's the potential function for Brown emotion. So in this regard, if you say there are any way to link to the Brown emotion, this is. Fortunately, in this talk, I'm not going to touch this topic. I even don't want to do the fully transform in this talk because I want to save the time. So I don't will not go to the details of the uh, proof. Okay. So I start with uh, the. Uh, Stochastic integral. Okay, so the first, uh, uh, you know, stochastic integral is very easy to define, and it is defined in any standard textbook in probability. One of the things that the textbook treats this the definition, for example, 
they just build up this, uh, you know, uh, uh, integrals for the simple function, then extend to, you know, that's uh, for the all edges, and use that's the um, Ito isometry to do that. Um, so <coughs> I'd like to consider the same thing, same kind of treatment for multi-dimensional stochastic integral. And, it's the, and we start with a formal writing. So for any that's a multivariate integrand, you, you just write that's the integral, you try to define in terms of uh, in integral with a sim permutation symmetrical, you know, integrand like this. Then to define that the right-hand side, you basically, um, you try to introduce uh, isometry. That's the multi-dimensional variable. So you basically introduce that's the uh, use of the Hermit polynomials and uh, yeah, they are defined that's the um, I n isometry by consider its definition on this uh, kind of, uh, you know, the, the tensor product of uh, fixed functions, because those functions generates, that's a, uh, um, generates this, uh, uh, you know, uh, symmetrical tensor space. Um, so under this definition, of course, that's another thing is why you do this is because, remember that's HN is, uh, you know, the HN of W is the, the weak power of this W of phi, uh, when that's a W of phi is standard. So those are the things I believe that people in your institute are more experts than me, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, so that is defined. After this construction, so then you have a orthogonal decomposition of the L2 space um, in such a way. Um, so there are some typos here. So, that's, um, so that is to say that uh, uh, for any L2 square integrable random variable, you can at least in theory to write that into a decomposition, uh, the orthogonal decomposition. And by orthogonal and isometry, that's uh, the, this, the second moment have a nice representations. So the, the things I wanted to say in this talk is, so in general, beyond this model, if you have any, give you a Gaussian noise and you have this kind of a decomposition for L2 space, therefore, for anything generate reasonably by uh, this Gaussian noise, a random variable, what can you do and what can you say through this, uh, you know, that's uh, the decomposition? So. Here, I just take our model as an example to show that how we do the business to, with this, you know, the, the chaos expansion. So one of the classical examples of Ito chaos expansion, Ito winner chaos expansion is this, that's the classical. It turns out we are going to use this uh, uh, example in our proof. Okay, so another example, is of course our model, that's a parabolic, sorry, hyperbolic Anderson. It is, like I mentioned, giving defined in this, uh, you know, while mild uh, uh, equations. So now you iterate this equation infinite times to see what happens. When you iterate this once, you are going to increase that uh, term by one infinite times you are going to get an infinite series. And this infinite series, I n have this kind of recurrent relations by the way we iterate that. 
Um, then the justice do algebra, you are going to find regardless what's the meaning of this uh, you know, integral. You are going to have come up with a notation like this. Um, then you can write that into the multi, at least in form multi varied, you know, stochastical integrals. And as I, we mentioned before, you can encode this into that's the map under the I n, where that's the G n is that's a symmetry like symmetrization of that's the uh, G n. So that's what we do to this model. So formerly you have an expansion. So this expansion may or may not converge. By convergence, we mean the convergence in L2. So when it is convergence, that's need to the solvability or uni uniqueness and uh, um, existence of the equations. So, this solvability issues all reduced to by a now standard procedure, reduced to that's the convergence of this series. So in the literatures, there are quite of the literatures and use this method to solve the equations. Um, So in that case, you have a, um, you know, this representation. Um, so the most direct problem this kind of structure can solve, and like I say, is, is a solvability. Simply to find the condition that makes the convergence of this series. Um, so that's involved to estimate this, uh, the, the, the general term. And in our arguments, we are going to do a precise estimate of that's, uh, this term, which you know, will guarantee under our condition of convergence of it. Um, but like I say, we're not uh, satisfied with this type of application. We wanted to, if possible, to apply this, uh, you know, that's uh, the decomposition beyond the L2 problems. That's what, um, okay. So I'm going to do the lower bounds for our um, uh, theorems where that's the, uh, either the t goes to infinity or p goes to infinity. So holder inequality says that you can bound it, that's a LP norm of this uh, uh, solution um, by that's a uh, linearization, I call this linearization, where the L, where the X can be any arbitrary random variables with the, that's the co-norm equal to one. Okay, um, here is what, how we chose that. So we are going to properly define uh, F in that's uh, the H space and forget about those kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, complicated representation of the F because we're not going to that details. Just think about, we, you know, found a suitable F and we make, uh, you know, this kind of form that is linked to our examples we gave before and normalize this into a, you know, that's a, the, you know, the LQ elements with a normal equal to one. That's our X we choose here. So we hope under this choice and with the proper choice of that F, we are going to And for our uh, result, for, for our uh, limits. So those are just a simple algebra of normalization. So eventually you reach here, 
And now I just want to remind you that for the uh, you that's a solution we have a both uh, okay so both prod, uh, both factors have the um, decomposition and uh, the next page what we are going to do is we are going to use that orthogonality and isometry and to write it out to a nice way okay. Here, you wonder uh, what this uh, uh, difference will make. First of all, that's will make uh, our model simpler, uh, okay? Because you know, for that uh, win little winner chaos expansion, one of the structure perhaps you noticed is use the symmetrization of G N. That means G Delta Gn is giving us the average permutation average. So in the calculation, the permutation actually makes the life much harder if you pursue some precise results. So get rid of the permutation without the loss is the key for the success. So if you, you know, act in this uh, tensor product, as a linearization to that's, uh, the models, then that will get rid of permutation. You say here is the here of a theta and here you don't. That means you get rid of that's, uh, the, the permutation. So then if further you write, and this is the, you know, the whole thing is, that's the, the square of the norm for our, you know, tensor space, product space. So then you come up to write your lower bounds in the form like this. Um, I, okay, so before we move on, I want to say, so we get that's uh, the lower bound like this. And you compare with uh, the original problem, you can say it, but it's not hard to say this, make the, you know, the computation easy. We'd rather to deal with a quantity like this than the previous examples. Um, so the following is just uh, some, uh, you know, um, regular computations. I'm not going to, do the details because those are sometimes need a, 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 it's too much details. So I'm not going to go along and I just uh, want to quickly, quickly move to get the lower bound. So that is uh, some kind of, uh, you know, the argument, the standard argument. So that's is what we want. So that's is a lower bound for our main result. Um, well, that's still a part of the details. I'm not going to do that. That's a special uh, exponentiation, time exponentiation, also part of the game, but I'm not going to emphasize that. Okay, upper bound. So this is the upper bound listed in our main theories. And we wanted to do that. Again, so I think uh, uh, we need to uh, do a, a substantial effort to link that's the uh, e to winner chaos expansion to LP problems when the P is not two. So that's the idea is of what we call hypercontractivity argument. And the results I'm going to use is from one paper. I don't know, I'm not an expert on, on this subject. So there may be have a big industry about this hypercontractivity. I, I just did not rework, uh, know this. So I, so I cited one specific paper for this. So let's consider that's the uh, hyperbolical uh, Anderson equation with the, you know, the 
coefficient theta put front of uh, square of theta put front of that uh, the noise. Um, so we we use a spatial notation put that's uh, the theta uh, index this uh, by uh, you know refer to that's the dependence on the theta and with this notation when the theta equal to one that is our previous model. So the hyperbolical the hypercontractivity inequality I cited directly from this paper I'm going to show you later on this uh, uh, paper that states the comparison between the p norm and uh, I'm sorry I there's a yes that's it true so the between the p norm and the two norms with uh, the price you pay and put the you know the theta equal to p minus one p so that is a so this is inequality called hyper contractivity inequality. The next equality is come from our time scaling. That's why we assume that our covariance have a scaling property because by that we can scale the time. So then you can scale the time. So you say that uh, no matter that's when you, if the T goes to the infinity or if P goes to infinity, what I put in this uh, timing on the right hand side will go to infinity no matter what. So you can say that's the problem of upper bound. Now is reduced to L2 problems. Okay, by this hypercontractivity. L2 problems for long for the large T are some topics. Okay, so that's what we need to, you know, establish in order to prove the upper bound. So then that's the, the chaos expansion become relevant again. Um, so we just assigned that L2 representation and the second equality again is a result from scaling. So we scale the time from T to one. Remember T is going to infinity. Um, so then what we need to do is to get a high moment asymptoticals for the general term. Remember this uh, T already equal to one. So here I want to, to argue if we can establish this high moment asymptoticals, then we will get results like this. Um, if that is the case, of course, uh, the whole upper bound problem is reduced to, you know, this specific high moment problems. And why this link is true is because a very elementary fact that's yeah, like this. So, now, in the rest of our talk, the topical changes is how you deal with the high moments of, you know, or some topics like this. I want to say this. So the people may ask, what is the challenge for doing this high moments or some topics? I want to say that so the challenge comes from this tail permutation. So there is a permutation inside the L2 norm. Um, the key is how you get rid of the permutation without uh, loss the precision of your estimate. One way, simple way to do that is JSON inequality, but that will not maintain that's the, the sharp will not, you know, give us a sharp bound. So we have to do something better than that. Um, the results, okay, so there are several steps to do that. So first of all, I wanted to do that, so the um, time exponentiation 
um, to make that model simple to deal with. So here it is. So I'm, I'm interested about to evaluate this thing, means I'm going to take a Laplace transform to my moment. Because we know Laplace transform does not lose any information. If you can take a Laplace inverse spike, you still get that's the, the the Laplace transform, we know that's a trick to simplify the problem. So what we want is to push this exponential uh, integral into that L2 node. We know that is a, not the easy part because that is against case inequality. So we did a little bit of trick and then like this. So first of all, uh, we define a, a H function of T, T delta like this. Remember that's the G function, GN function inside is a time integral of a non-negative integral. Therefore, those G functions are monotonical in T and T delta. Therefore, this H is monotonic, non-decreasing to T and T. Then you, you construct two independent exponential times. And so you basically use this uh, you know, that's uh, the simple comparison. So change that to that's uh, the um, two independent exponential time situation. And therefore you can push those uh, by linearity uh, time integ uh, exponential integral into the um, form. Um, so that's what we do. But here, the big step is how, like I say, is how you get rid of a permutation. Um, so we use the Heim-Balak theorem and for H like this, and the Heim-Balak theorem did not require that H be non-negative, but we add this there is because this part is a non-negative function. And also we're talking about the symmetrical forms. Therefore, it can be, ex can be expected that F can be properly approximated by the linear form like this, okay? Um, I have to confess here, I cheated a little bit. This argument and this moment cannot make to the rigorous mathematical argument, but convincing. The rigorous mathematical arguments appear in a, a paper I wrote a year ago for some different issues. At that time, it was a very technical, you know, combinatorial argument. Okay, so by that kind of uh, cheating, so we expect our problem, this is a problem we are interested in, and can be linked to this kind of linear um, here, this part, I will say that's a much, much easier to be deal with than original problem. Is because first of all, we know this kind of a tensor product acting on this part will diminish that's the permutation. So you, you get rid of this tail. So the problem becomes this. And this part, the, the multi-integral part, okay. Uh, it's, um, let me just, uh, I think I should get a little bit more details. So from here, you can see, you can write that the, the, into that's the inner product. The, the kernel, there is a kernel of the product of the gammas, tensor of the gammas. The tensor of the gammas combine with this tensor of F produce this F bar. And uh, F bar, I forgot. Okay, so F bar I you introduced before, that's uh, uh, the convolution between the gamma and A. Okay, now that you get this kind of result. Now here is the reason why we wanted to introduce Laplace transform, because that makes this, you know, 
quantity simple. So you separate the variable. After you separate the variable, you know, plug into this form and you do a little bit of substitution to make that look the, the form of this product looks nicer. So you get this. Now the question is to ask what will happen to this quantity when n goes to infinity? I need this thing here. I, I think I say I don't want to go too much details. So then because of that, so you get this, and that will give you this. So that's a lot of our final goal. Our final goal is ask for the asymptoticals for this, uh, you know, the, the, the L2 quantities when n goes to infinity for fix t equal to one. Now you can do the scaling because our, you know, that's the homogeneity. This thing can be written as this thing multiplied to this t's power. And this part you take out and this part to create, this part to create a gamma function or factorials. So put those two relations together. That give you what we demand. Um, so that is uh, the, of course, not the proof, the skeleton of the proof. Um, so here is uh, uh, the some reference. Since I did not, I cut a lot of, uh, you know, the, the remark about uh, the connection to the literature out. So uh, it seems that uh, those reference does not uh, connect well to um, my talk. So let me just explain. The first is a paper contains the, the result I'm talking about. Um, those of the, the results relative, uh, relevant uh, to that's the model of hyperbolic Andersons appear in the, um, um, in the paper. You see those two papers are not a very long time. So I, that suggests that that's the, the study of that's this model started not a very long time ago. That's this, the last paper, was a paper deal with a, a very different uh, subject. This become relevant because that's the technique to deal with the high moment with the permutation was cited from this paper. Um, uh, there are some other connections. For example, I will mention this Dalang Mueller tribe uh, papers. I remember last time, two some years ago, I gave this talk in your seminar. One audience asked me the question because I say that's a, I say, I make a remark at that time. I said that's a, a hyperbolic uh, model does not have a female cat's representation, then the audience says, you are not, uh, not true. So they, they have a female cast. Um, so I cite this paper. So this, what they call female cast, actually, essentially is that's the eto winner chaos expansion in the deterministic case. Okay, this deterministic version of uh, the winter winner Ito chaos expansion. Um, so in this regard, yes, we are doing things without a female cats. All we depends is uh, that's a um, chaos expansion. So it is my wish, my hope that we can develop a kind of industry of technology to solve the problems where the model is built up from a Gaussian noise because any square integrable model built from the Gaussian noise have expansion 
So the question is, what can you do without expansion and to get the result you want? So that's my hope to do something. Thank you for your patience. <clears throat> Thank you very much for very interesting uh, and expository talk. Uh, I have some comments, but uh, first of all, maybe somebody have comments and questions, please. Excuse me, please. May I give some comments and questions? First sure, of all, sure questions, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the first questions, as I understand, you can see the usual Laplace operator on RD with a random potential as a Gaussian noise. Because you can see the random potential. So in such situation, we will have an intermittency. And you define the intermittency in terms of higher moments, not only uh, to first moments by you use for it, high moments too. Uh, and I would like to ask you why you consider, all, I would like to ask you, you consider only this random potential in such form or in other cases you consider too or not? Uh, if I understand your question correctly, you basically say, what can you do some things without this kind of potential form? Is that what you ask? Uh, what form? You consider the situation with uh, Gaussian noise. And uh, we can consider different type of random potential. Right. Uh, and I would like uh, to ask you, do you consider another form of potential? Uh, for example? Uh, for example, Weibull, uh, random potential, um, in stationary uh, random potential that didn't depend on time, has the Weibull or Wumbil situation or something else. Uh, I, okay, so I, don't know. I cannot answer this because that's what I try to, in my remark, end remark, I try to develop <coughs> to have uh, this kind of uh, method to, to use in a broader uh, case. I want to say this. So this um, argument, this idea is, is still in the beginning. For example, let me just give you an example. I spend so much time to consider the same type of problems for the case where the Gaussian noise depends on the time. Um, what, I, what I can do is I can get some bounds, but not the precision I stated in this main result. It turns out time dependence add a lot of more difficult. Yes, yes, of course. Of course I agree. Uh, uh, Lena, uh, may I also add something uh, to uh, Xia answer? Uh, I think that the one uh, important uh, thing also is the weak product. You see, ah, yes, uh, yes, this is course, a weak product yes. between potential and uh, so uh, uh, in the case of uh, non Hausian distribution, uh, we have to define uh, uh, in some sense the product or the integral uh, or stochastic integral, which we will discuss. Yeah. Uh, just one minute, uh, uh, Andrew. So I guess you are talking about when you say the big product, you are talking about the handling of something like this, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, I just uh, say that uh, when you consider non, uh, uh, let us show the slide with initial prop, with initial equation. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, this no, one. this one. Yeah. Oh, this one. Uh, here uh, you have a weak product between uh, W and solution. A weak so, product, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. So the potential is uh, <clears throat> acting on the uh, solution in the sense of score hot integral. Yeah, right. And right. Uh, my, uh, my just remark was 
that when we have non Gaussian uh, but random or uh, even generalized that random potential, we have to define properly the action of this potential uh, uh, solution. And depending on the definition, we will have different solutions. Right. Yes, yes, you are right, because we consider situation with Wundel and Weibel potential. Uh, uh, but in, of course, we consider here only, uh, we, we consider potential, random potential, yes. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit in other situation, and I understand it, of course. Thank you. And uh, maybe only one more question. When we consider a uh, hyper uh, contractivity case, yes. you can see the theta. Yes. Theta greater than zero in such. Uh, right, right. The name just moved to there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, equation. Ah, yes, I, I know. Yeah, uh, yes, you put it in into equation square root of theta. Yeah, yeah here. Here. here is it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you consider the situation? For example, if theta is equal to zero, for example, we have uh, we haven't any second term, and there isn't any intermittence in such situation. Right. So do because that's become a deterministic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. When theta uh, do you investigate some this situation when theta tends to zero or not? In our case, we do this for the theta goes to infinity. Let me just show you the next page. So this is how we apply that. So the theta is P minus one. In our case, the P can go to infinity, at least the P is a great a comparison between P norm and two norm. How sharp, yeah. So how sharp this comparison when that's uh, the theta goes to zero, I don't know. Uh, um, uh, again, maybe it will be useful to uh, check uh, Nelson hypercontractivity estimation for Einstein Ullenbeck semi group uh, in the uh, infinite dimensional case. And uh, uh, it can be found, uh, for example, in Bogachev's book on Gaussian measures. And uh, uh, you can see the, uh, how precise it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, not, uh, yes, uh, Andrew, I want to make a remark, follow your remark. So, um, Actually, the paper I cited here, the, the model they talk about, well, not that's the hyperbolic, that's a parabolic Anderson model with this. Then you look at their arguments, the proof in details, you found the arguments actually can be used to almost all those uh, linear SPDEs. So mm -hmm. that is, a, I think, this is a general phenomenon. That's a hypercontractivity inequalities. I thought I actually believe there's a big industry already there. The only reason I don't know this is because I'm not an expert. Mm -hmm. So this is just beginning. <laughs> that's just beginning. <laughs> okay. So it it is my hope much. that's a two, you know. No, to make Thank a, you very much for your talk. And of course, we consider parabolic situation yeah. with random potential. So is, your talk is very interesting. Thank you. Uh, OK, uh, some I other have... question. Uh, OK, yes, please. Uh, I have a very short question. It is also about deeper contra uh, contractivity. As I understand here, you could put P and T together. So therefore, as I understand, at least the upper bound you can formulate in the sense when T and P goes to infinity simultaneously, but not as you did uh, in the in in your in your main statement where you separately send T to infinity or P to infinity. Right. So I could make a more general statement. In a okay, and you have also the inequality, uh, the estimate from below, right? And you can control uh, this right. from below as well, right? Right, uh, from below, that's just a linearization. So this, uh, 
um, uh, one specific, you know, that's a fun, uh, run of virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, please, uh, yeah, some other yeah. questions. Uh, I would like to say that I like this hypercontractivity very much, and uh, it, it's very good and beautiful trick. And it's a miracle that you get very nice estimates using this um, abstract, well, ab abstract theorem on hypercontractivity. And my question is the following: uh, your your potential has uh, some scaling, nice scaling property. Nice. But maybe you can prove your theorem if you have some asymptotics at zero or at infinity. Is it true? You are absolutely right. I think that if you assume that the gamma functions is uh, homogeneous and zero, then you are going to do that job. Or, or maybe it's like um, a regularly varying function, maybe something like this. Yes, uh, it, it depends on how general you wanted to put. Sometimes Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, please some other questions. If there are no uh, any other uh, questions, uh, then uh, let me also say that, first of all, uh, it was a big pleasure for me to see uh, equation with the weak product because I spent a lot of time just considering such time of equations. And uh, 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 I think uh, that uh, uh, I will send uh, here to you my book in English uh, where you can find uh, okay. some uh, Eto Wiener expansion related to such uh, uh, partial stochastic deri uh, derivative equation in Skorohot sense. Uh, it was uh, very good to see uh, some, uh, I must say, transformation of large deviations technique, uh, which you use here. So uh, I call this var damit Skorohot. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, this is uh, the, this is a very, a very interesting picture. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, 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 and I insist that still uh, it will be interesting to use uh, not Ito Wiener expansion, but a Fourier Wiener transform, because mm -hmm. in this case. Uh, you will get uh, some uh, equation for Fourier Wiener transform. This is exactly the expectation with stochastic exponent, the product of, uh, so you will get uh, uh, the estimations for this expectation uh, came in, uh, coming from the <clears throat> usual partial differential equation, deterministic partial differential equation theory. In this way, uh, you write that uh, it can be applied not only for this uh, uh, differential equation, but for much wide cl uh, wider class of st uh, stochastic partial differential equation. Uh, so uh, it was uh, very interesting for me talk, and I hope that uh, you will uh, continue this work with uh, other uh, new and interesting results. Thank you very much. Thank you. And. Uh, uh, Georgi, do you know who will be next speaker? Uh, I... <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the end of our seminar. Uh, Sia, thank you very much again. And thank you. To see you mm -hmm. in Kiev in April. Uh, so, uh -huh. uh, so bye, everybody. Bye bye. Goodbye. Have a good day.